Well, millions of Americans collectively owe about $1.6 trillion in federal student loans, a burden they were free from during the pandemic. But not everyone is willing to give up on the payment pause. And now people are skipping out on making payments in protest. A new survey found 94% of respondents are struggling financially to start paying again. 60% missed, missed at least one payment. 25% have made a single payment, haven't done that. And 9% said they were flat out refusing to pay their student loans. About three quarters of those boycotting think their protest will lead to the cancellation of some or all of their student loan debt. But experts are warning this act of defiance will cause much more harm than could. Ted Jenkins is a personal finance expert and CEO at Oxygen Financial. He joins us now live. Uh, Ted, it is great to have you. So as you know, financial experts pretty much across the board advise against missing these payments for any reason. How financially damaging can this practice be? Well, Kelly, right here in the short term, it actually isn't going to be that damaging because the government created something called the on-ramp program. So technically, people have about a year before they can start dealing with default. But I think over time, people need to get their budgets in place at home and think about how they're going to repay this. So they're not going to get their wages garnished now. There's going to be no debt collectors. They're not going to go into delinquency. But it's a really bad practice to get into because it will catch up with these student loan borrowers in roughly a year if they don't pay. So some borrowers admit that they are refusing to pay out of protest. A majority in this camp believe their protest will lead to pressuring the government to do more to cancel out their debt altogether. Uh, what do you make of that logic, Ted? I mean, you know, happiness is about expectations met or unmet. So there are a lot of people that are really unhappy because they thought the government was going to allow $10,000 of canceled debt, in some cases, $20,000 of canceled debt. But let's face the facts. We're at $34 trillion of debt. And to come up with four or $500 billion right now, I think is going to be very challenging. There are small things right now that the administration has done. They've relieved roughly $130 billion of debt. But I think it's pie in the sky for those borrowers who are thinking that $10,000 is going to happen for some 43 million people. So, again, for many borrowers, the issue is that they are financially struggling, uh, leading to those missed payments. What would be your best advice for folks in that position? You say they have a bit of a year as a grace period. How do they get back on track comfortably? Well, first and foremost, the government did put forward something called the SAVE program or the Saving on a Valuable Education program. And this allows people to make those income-driven repayment plans at 5% of their discretionary income. In the old world, it was 10%. And depending upon your income, you actually legally might not have to make payments at all. So I would sign up for that program like some 7 million Americans have now. And then from there, you try to look closely at your credit cards. I recommend plastic surgery. Cut those credit cards up. Don't cancel them. Try to figure out what memberships, dues, subscriptions, or discretionary spending you simply don't want or you don't need. But Kelly, look, it's hard. Anytime you don't make a $300 payment for three years, it's really hard to get it back in your budget. Yeah, it certainly is. All right, Ted Jenkin, thank you as always. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.